What a wonderful setting and what a wonderful and important conference. I wish to thank the organizers for your leadership and your vision. This is exactly what we need. Um, Northern challenges, I think one of the biggest challenges that we face politically and business-wise is Brexit and the associated transformation of Europe. So in five minutes or less, I'm going to try and answer two questions. How, how can we possibly improve our Nordic cooperation? And secondly, what can be our contribution regarding the debate of European future? I'm under a lot of pressure because, as it happens, my daughter is here and she's, of course, my harshest critic, so <laughs> apologies if I uh, seem a bit nervous. But, uh, let's start with how we can uh, improve our cooperation within the Nordic countries. There's a debate going on in the Nordic Council whether Icelandic and Finnish should be given the uh, official status of, uh, of, uh, of official language status within that political cooperation. Here we are speaking English. I don't think it's taking anything away from our Nordic culture or cooperation. So let's be pragmatic and accept English as a working language in the Nordic cooperation, also in the political area. So that is my point number one, that we should be pragmatic about this and, and, uh, and, uh, and that is a message to the Nordic Council of Ministers when they are debating this issue. This, is, this has worked in the business world and I think it might be a contribution to political cooperation as well. Secondly, going to Europe. As we know, it's, uh, we have Catalonia, we have the Eurogroup moving forward, we have Scotland, Brexit, we have all of this. Uh, Europe is looking for vision. How can we combine all these different ambitions, political structures? And I think that uh, our contribution to this uh, is quite clear. And it is Nordic cooperation that unites is an umbrella for different political structures. It doesn't matter if you're outside the European Union or inside, if you're in the Euro or not or if you're in NATO or not. You can still have free trade, you can still have wonderful political cooperation. This is our contribution to the European debate and we should be very vocal about this. We shall not accept new trade barriers in Europe. There's no need for it. We can show in the Nordic uh, cooperation that we can uh, get along in terms of business and politics, even if we have different political structures, even if we have different uh, politi po political uh, ambitions. So that's, uh, I think, very crucial that we are more vocal about giving our own view of how Europe should go forward. This is a map, and the point here is that in addition to autonomous areas, we have uh, the, everyone working together. I'm um, actually the, uh, the Finnish representative in the uh, Nordic uh, 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 Freedom of Movement Council, and it's about being pragmatic, getting rid of uh, barriers to movement of people and enterprises. So that's message uh, number two. And then this, this is news from yesterday. And why is it important for us? Most of you recognize the person in the center. That's, of course, Richard Branson. He announced that he's investing with Hyperloop One. And this is a huge boost of confidence to this new technology. Do you know what Hyperloop is? It is a new form of transportation, a combination of a plane and train. It's a pod or shuttle that travels inside a tube in a vacuum and on an electromagnetic field. It goes more than 1,000 kilometers per hour. It's very likely that Finland is going to be the uh, place where the uh, proof of concept facility is going to be built. Well, I don't know whether, but Finland, the Finnic, Finnish government has, has already made an offer regarding this. And the reason why they want to come to the Nordic states is of course that we are very good at developing common standards, as we did with mobile telephony, and as we do in environment and other areas. So if it works in the Nordic setting, it will work in the European Union and the rest of the world. And my point is that we, when we're thinking about 
uh, combining uh, our resources and looking at different transportation links, possibly rail connection to the Arctic Sea, we shouldn't concentrate on today's technology. There are new technologies coming with incredible speed, and we should be looking at possibilities from there. So that's my key message. Thank you very much indeed.